Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my first ever live stream concert on YouTube. Uh, my name is Jonathan Postuma, a composer based in St. Paul. I'm just double checking that all of my things are still working um, and I am live streaming, live streaming from my bedroom here in uh, Newport. Tonight we are premiering five new recordings and videos that are Paul of Paul Clay Painted Songs, which is an ongoing series of chamber music inspired by the paintings of Swiss German painter Paul Clay. Uh, the series began back in 2011 and it continues to grow every year. Uh, last fall, I held a recital at Studio Z in St. Paul and one of my goals is to produce a recital of some kind uh, once every year that's focused exclusively on Paul Clay painted songs since it, it is such a large part of the work that I do as a composer. Um, so this is my 2020 Paul Clay painted songs recital. It's a little different than I had planned uh, before, but such are the times and I am so glad that you are all here. Um, as of tonight, there are 50 unique pieces already composed in this ongoing collection and I am planning over 165 pieces total. Um, of those 50, uh, about 30 of them have been recorded and premiered already, and so adding five more premieres to that series tonight uh, represents a huge step uh, forward for the series, and that is incredibly exciting. Um, the format for tonight will have opportunities for anyone that is watching the stream live to ask questions um, using the comments below or on the um, through YouTube. And I'll introduce in each video, uh, talk a little about the painting and the musician that is featured in that recording. And then if you want to leave a comment or question during the video, I'll be able to respond to those for a few minutes before I start, uh, before I start the next video. So I'm incredibly grateful to everyone that supported the project in the past and all of the musicians that have come alongside me to keep this project alive. Uh, later on in the live stream, I'll be talking about my plans for the future and launching a Patreon fundraiser to make more of these videos in the future with the hope that I can make a curriculum for art teachers or music teachers to um, use these videos in the classroom or from home for people that are um, homeschooling or learning from home. Um, so that is something exciting for the future of the project and this is in some ways uh, a test of my ability to create videos and to uh, move forward in that new exciting way. If you're interested in supporting that work there are some links in the description below. Um, the first link goes to a PayPal page that you can make a one-time gift to support the musicians featured in this live stream. A lot of work went into making this, and many of these musicians are also teachers and active chamber musicians. There's a lot of uncertainty ahead in our field, so on their behalf, I want to thank you for your support. Uh, just checking in to see if there's any comments, uh, so people saying hello from different places. I'm super excited. Um, Vernon, Yoshi, and Terry, nice to um, see you. Um, on to our first song. So our first song is um, Contemplation at Breakfast. It's a painting from 1925. Uh, earlier this spring, back in April, Isaac Mayhew, who's a composer and trumpet, trumpet player in the cities, um, brought together several composers to compose one minute pieces for trumpet. And he called the collection Walking Songs. Uh, this piece is what I composed for him to perform. And it was premiered back in July over Zoom. And um, one of the goals of the series is to write a piece for every solo instrument, um, a portrait, a scene, and a symbol. So three movements. And this is the scene that I chose for trumpet. Uh, something that's new about this piece that from when it was premiered earlier this year is that I've added an orchestral accompaniment track. And that's actually a reworking of an earlier piece from 2015 called Strings of Pearls. Um, and Clay himself borrowed from his own work, so I felt it'd be interesting to reuse and recycle some of my own work and recast it into new pieces of music. Um, and 
In this painting in particular, Clay actually painted over a colorful underlayer with black and then like scraped away the paint to reveal these images. And I thought that was an interesting metaphor to, to grapple with musically, um, kind of making two layers, two works that can exist simultaneously and you peel away the layers to, to see them in relation to each other. So essentially I've made a trumpet concerto um, for electronics or pre-recorded electronics and trumpet um, which is really something very exciting and new for me as a composer. Um, Isaac plans to release this piece and the others from the Walking Songs collection later on this year. So keep posted to, to hear more about that. And I'm really excited to feature him in this new recording um, for tonight. So here is Contemplation at Breakfast. So uh, that was Contemplation at Breakfast. Um, thanks, Isaac, uh, for performing uh, the solo trumpet part and for everyone else that, uh, that is watching. Um, one thing I wanted to point out about this painting um, and what I wanted to highlight in this video is Clay's obsession with balance. Um, no matter what way you look at uh, no matter what way you look at this painting or flip it around or manipulate it, it is still a balanced piece, which I find so fascinating about many of Clay's works. Uh, and I almost feel like it is Clay arguing with himself um, from all points of view about this chicken and egg paradox. Um, and the trumpet is almost telling this joke or setting up the punchline against this ominous, dark background of strings, uh, which is a fun a fun way to recycle that recording and also to tap into Clay's humorous but kind of dark um, contemplation at breakfast here. Um, don't see any questions in the chat. If you do have them about this piece in particular, uh, you can comment and leave your comments for me. Otherwise, I will continue to march onward um, to the rest of the pieces in the premiere. Um, the next one is called Landscape with Yellow Birds. And um, th 
this is something that I started back in August of 2018. Uh, at that time, I was sketching out ideas for a series of quartets um, for, for uh, four of the same kind of instruments. So there'll be four flutes or four oboes, four clarinets, four bassoons, etc. And clay is a lot of paintings that are about birds or about fish. So for each of these quartets, I'm writing a bird movement and a fish movement. Uh, so tonight you're actually going to hear two of the bird movements, the four flutes piece, which is this one, Landscape with Yellow Birds, and then the four clarinet piece, which is Bird Garden, and I'll feature a little bit later on tonight. Um, Yoshi Weinberg is a flutist based in New York, uh, but also a former coworker and friend that has been very active in the Twin Cities as well. Um, they also premiered part of the flute solo from the series back in January, a piece called um, Woman Cursing, uh, and have really been a friend of the project for a long time. So I'm pumped to be featuring Yoshi's incredible um, flute performance. Um, Yoshi's also a harpist and composer with a wonderful range of, of music that's just gorgeous. So check that out as well. Um, Yoshi recorded all of the tracks to this piece a few weeks ago. Uh, and I'm really excited that after years of having these sketches um, that we finally put this recording together. Uh, so um, I will be moving on to um, Landscape with Yellow Birds.
So uh, thank you, Yoshi, for, for that piece um, and for that performance on all four flute parts with some additional uh, added um, electronics that we did um, in, the, in the editing with the, the reverb and so forth. It was a very fun uh, project to put together. Uh, one thing I love about this painting is imagining how the birds interact with each other and keep your eye moving back and forth. Uh, so it's really fun to try to bring that across in the video with having them pop pop in, in and out. Um, looks like we have some questions about this piece. Um, Terry asks, if you were to write a piece for one of the plants in this landscape, um, which would you choose and what would you title your composition? And actually the, the following comment about Rather Dash gets at my answer. I actually feel like these are underwater plants for some reason. They look like something you'd have in a fish tank, not in a in a forest where birds would be. So I would probably call it something like underwater uh, plants or aquatic adventure, something fun like that. Um, and actually, Clay does have a lot of paintings about fish and was, I think, there's a very famous example of him um, teaching a lecture with his fish tank and having the students like look down at the fish and look at the side of the fish and sketch them. He had like a fish tank in his studio and in his lecture hall and had fish for years um, as he was a teacher and was fascinated by them. Um, so I don't have a fish tank or any birds uh, to, to listen to while I compose, but I have Clay's paintings to respond to, um, which are very vivid in their depiction of these animals. Um, oh, I wanted to um, share my, my original sketches for this piece, uh, just because I think it's a funny inside joke. Um, these are my original sketches from this piece and also for Bird Garden. Um, on the top, we have the sketch for Landscape with Yellow Birds. And on the bottom, these are my sketches for Bird Garden. Um, and I did them on SBCO <laughs> Stationery, which is where I work. Back in 2018, I, I sketched them on a lunch break. Um, these little motives that are used throughout the piece. And I find it really fun to, to play with these motives. I basically assigned a little song to each bird and the the song that they sing is a permutation of some very short phrases. So sometimes they are inverted or played backwards or both are combined in different ways. And so just like Clay is basically saying, a bird is nothing more than a few triangles and circles smooshed together. I tried to do that melodically by saying, these are the fragments that I've manipulated and pushed together to represent each of the birds in the drawing. And that, that's also true for Bird Garden, a piece I'll be sharing the video with um, further down in the concert. Um, also, I, working at the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra is where I met Yoshi. Um, that's where we were co-workers. So it's kind of fun to um, finally share this piece and <laughs> the original stationery um, that the initial idea was sketched on. Um, it looks like there's another comment uh, about the blend of the flutes and the mixing process. Uh, was there back and forth between myself and Yoshi or was the mixing completed all on one end or the other? It's a great question. Uh, I had, I sent the score to Yoshi and said, just record all of the tracks in whatever way is most comfortable, you know, knowing that neither of us can get into a studio together. Um, and we weren't even in the same place at that time. So I said, just record the tracks in whatever setup you have and I will do the editing uh, on the end. So must have had a good setup because I thought the raw like recordings were very good quality. And I actually added the echo for each of the tracks manually just by like shifting the track. Um, so it's actually, I think eight or 12 of the same tracks and some manipulated so that they're constantly echoing each other and fading in and out. Um, so thank you that the mixing process sounded good. I'm not really an audio engineer. That's not my training. Um, so this is new to do it, be doing audio and visual engineering, but they're skills that really have a lot of shelf life and can, can are really important. So I'm really happy that um, to, to explore doing them. Um, so uh, let's go on to the next piece here, uh, which is called Landscape with Agaves. And this features a percussionist, um, Eri Isomura. Um, 
and let me find my notes here. It was the sketches from 1927, and it's another one of the scenes. So we have a portrait scene and symbol uh, for marimba, and Ari actually performed two of these movements last October at my concert. Um, Ari is incredibly involved in the new music community up here in the Twin Cities, uh, is a core member of 10th Wave Chamber Collective. Actually, I'm going to plug this. Um, coffee mug that I am using in my live stream. Um, Tenth Wave is doing some of the best and most incredible work in, in the new music community up here in the Twin Cities, and Aerie is a big part of that. So I'm pumped to feature her in, in this live stream and this new movement. Uh, one thing I wanted to explore in this piece is prepared marimba, which is basically attaching other objects, wooden dowels, plastic cups, seeds, coins, all kinds of things um, to the marimba, which means it's an entirely different instrument. Uh, it's not really that easy to perform, and that's why Ari is such an incredible performer for being willing to do this and to like learn a completely different style of playing. Um, you'll also see some hand-drawn sketches that I made of Clay's, this is Clay's original image on the left, and you'll see me attempting to recreate it in like record time alongside Ari's performance. That's something I really used when writing this piece, was thinking, what is the sound of the artist connecting with the paper, the, the sound of the pencil tapping and scraping and, and drawing lines and circling? And that's really how I approached um, this piece, is the gesture of each line and how it might correspond um, from the artist's hand onto the paper and then from, from that picture into the music. So there's some improvisation that happens. It was really fun to um, put these sketches together. Um, and this is the final project. So this is Landscape with Agaves featuring Eri Isomura.
All right. Um, thank you, Ari, um, for that incredibly virtuosic performance. Um, I'm so glad that we have a video of that performance because uh, it really shows um, the layout of all of the preparations on the marimba and also the extreme logistics required to perform this piece. We are like playing over here, picking something up, dropping it, jumping from one end to the other. Um, it certainly did not make it easy um, to perform this piece. And it's such a fun piece to watch uh, someone perform. I hope you also enjoyed my uh, drawings as well. That was kind of a race against the clock to, to finish those. Um, I have a couple of questions about that as well. So were you listening to Aries' performance while you were drawing and because it's so synced up? Actually, I drew two of the painting or two of the drawings to, uh, to an earlier recording of the piece. And then the final one that still has the live sound, it was timed with a video. So yes, I did um, listen and watch um, Aries' performances while sketching. And actually one of the videos is sped up a little bit because the timing of the original recording was longer because of some of the improvisation. So I did budge the um, fast forward a little bit on some of them to keep it in sync because I gave myself instructions uh, in the score of draw all of the lines, all of the, the hills and towers first and then draw the big leaves and then draw the like grass and dots. And so I kind of gave myself areas to focus on at different times of the piece but it ended up being a little bit of a race against the clock uh, to finish this, uh, to finish the drawing before the recording ran out. And that's part of the fun of this piece uh, as well and creating that um, visual response um, to the music. And yeah, read a couple other comments here about um, the landscape really fitting the music well and empty in some spaces, sharp in others, yet overall busy and active. Well, well thank you. Um, it's, a, it's a fascinating, uh, it's a fascinating sketch. Uh, at the, and this is the original one you can see now. So I would, I would challenge all of you to, um, when I post this video, maybe grab some colored pencils and try to draw along in the future. It's actually really fun to just freely try to copy Clay's pretty simple composition of, of lines um, and ends up being a fun activity. Uh, I thought it was fun, but I also am into art. <laughs> so it was very, very fun to, to do that video as well. Uh, all right, moving on to the next one. I hinted at this piece a little bit earlier called Bird Garden. And in many ways, it's a companion piece to the flute quartet that you heard earlier, Landscape with the Yellow Birds. Um, and actually I sketched the material for both of these around the same time and Clay competed or completed both paintings only about a year apart or so. So it actually makes sense that they're exploring many of the same visual ideas and musical ideas um, between the flute and the clarinet quartets. This premiere features Mike Grutzner, who is a clarinetist based in New Mexico. I met Mike back in 2016 when he was studying at the University of Southern Mississippi. And at that time, we talked about Paul Clay painted songs and in particularly the first piece in the series, which is called Twittering Machine, a piece for clarinet and piano. Um, oh, I see Mike is saying hello from New Mexico. Well, hello from the frozen winter wonderland that is uh, the Twin Cities, Minnesota at the moment. Um, anyway, I. Uh, and Mike has performed Twittering Machine, which is for clarinet and piano, um, on a student recital a few years ago. This summer, I reached out to Mike because uh, he has been releasing, uh, since the pandemic, he's been releasing videos of clarinet choir pieces. Many of them are like covers of popular songs on his YouTube channel, and I've watched some of them, and they've been really great. And I reached out and said, hey, I have a clarinet quartet. Would you want to... Um, add that to your channel. And he said, that sounds really fun. Uh, and we put this together in a couple of weeks. And I'm really excited that that I can share this clarinet quartet with all of you and, and feature Mike playing on all four of the parts. Uh, I think Mike's performance really captures the playfulness of these birds. And in our conversation back and forth, Mike himself described the music as brimming with cheerful darkness and meticulously nonchalant. And I absolutely love that description. I, I've never been so cheerfully dark and meticulously nonchalant 
in my um, composition before. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy this performance of Bird Garden. All right, uh, that was Bird Garden uh, featuring Mike Grutzner. Thank you, Mike. I love the way the clarinet um, can blend together and sound like one instrument and be so fluid and so effortless. Um, and Mike makes it sound so e easy. It's just incredible. Uh, and some of you have commented too that the flute is a very bird-like instrument, but the clarinet works equally well. I, I agree. Uh, I think that the clarinet is such a flexible instrument and can be used can be used to imitate birds. Birds have a huge range of sounds as well. So some birds are more clarinet-like and some are more bird-like or oboe-like or violin-like or tuba-like if they're very large birds. Um, so I love birds uh, and composers that reference birds. So uh, this has been a lot of fun to um, explore bird sound through, through these paintings. Uh, Checking if there's any other questions or comments here. 
Uh, yes, yeah, there are kind of two different birds in here. I also feel like there's a foreground and a background. There's these like more mysterious chords in the background and then the birds interrupting each other and overlapping um, kind of the two different two different species of birds in the painting represented that way. Um, great. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm hoping to continue making more videos about Clay's paintings and my music and using these recordings and some that I have from other performers in, in recent years and gearing them towards teachers and students. I come from a music education background and I've always felt that these compositions could be used in art classrooms or music classrooms where students are learning about clay and kind of building up that interdisciplinary connection. Um, Paul Clay himself was a violinist, um, considered being a concert violinist for a few years and had a deep connection between visual art and music. And he actually would perform or play his violin for an hour or two before he would start painting as a warm up to kind of get his creativity flowing um, and it, before he actually put the, his brush onto the canvas. He, he was also a master educator at the Bauhaus, which is a very famous uh, German school of art and design. He taught there during the 20s, uh, 1920s, and was one of the most influential um, teachers in that movement. So my hope is that by exploring clay um, a little bit more through these videos, that I can bring the, my music and the project to a wider audience, but also um, give teachers and parents and students resources to explore Clay's painting in the context of, of a musical medium, um, which is really the whole reason behind Paul Clay Painted Songs. So um, this next video is an example of the kind of video that I'm hoping to make more of to build this visual and musical handbook to Paul Clay um, and I'm going to share that with you now. Oh, actually, I should, this is the, this is my Patreon page that supports that um, as well. There's a link to that in the description below, and this is the promotional video. Um, She Bellows, We Play was completed by Paul Clay in 1928 and uses two sets of continuous line drawings to characterize a group of three animals on the left and a single animal on The chromatically interwoven blue lines of flute and clarinet are entangled in the lower register, but interrupting this fluid texture are abrupt yellow interjections accented in the higher register. As these lines continue, they sometimes complement each other by passing the line between the two instruments, but they also tug and pull at one another and are also interrupted by winces and yelps as the characters wrestle playfully. Number 19. She Bellows, We Play from Paul Clay Painted Songs was completed on November 3, 2018 and premiered by No Exit, a contemporary music ensemble based in Cleveland, Ohio, in January 2020.
All right. I, I always love the ending. I, all right. I, I always love the ending of that piece. Um, it always makes me smile. It makes me laugh. The whole piece does. Uh, I want to thank um, No Exit, which is the ensemble featured in this video. Um, they premiered this um, piece back in January, and it's one of those fun little pieces uh, that I am really think it would work well uh, in the classroom. Uh, I think it has a lot of teachable things that students could grasp onto. I actually should give you all a, a pop quiz right now about line drawings and musical lines and all of that, but I won't. It's YouTube, um, so I won't do that. But uh, if you want to support this project where I'm hoping to release more of these videos, maybe every month, every couple of weeks, to try to build up this library into a curriculum that I can share with teachers, or if, if you know a teacher or a parent or someone who would love to have more of um, things like this, I'd be incredibly interested in reaching, um, in meeting with you or talking with you um, to kind of turn this from just a musical thing into something that teachers um, or students can actually use and learn from and dig into and share. Um, so you can use the Patreon as probably the, the primary way to support that if you're interested in that um, and the, or want updates about the project and its future. You can just click that you are interested as well without contributing. Uh, I'm gonna move on to our next piece, making sure I don't have uh, any comments to respond to. Um, yes, it is a really fun piece. <laughs> um, one of my favorites, that's why I put it on the program because I, it brings a smile to me every time. Um, our final song for the night is called City of Churches. And it's probably the most personal piece on the program. Uh, Shannon Murphy, which is the organist featured in this in the premiere, uh, was a musician that uh, was in my fundraiser from last October for the project. And uh, over November, December, January, I wrote these three movements for solo organ that they were going to pre be premiered in April on this magnificent, beautiful organ in this huge cathedral in downtown New York City. Um, I had booked my flight. I had everything planned to attend the premiere in April. It was an organ series that Shannon was really excited about um, premiering these pieces on and the pandemic happened and everything had to had to get canceled and fall through so it was it was sad as it has been for so many musicians and uh, people all backgrounds um, but it's, I'm so excited that Shannon has has been supportive of this work and has agreed to record this movement and wants to premiere more of it down the road um, but it's it's always humbling to think about what could have been and where, where our priorities were um, and how everything is changing. It's, it's humbling to think about this painting and its history in that light as well. Um, it was completed in 1918, shortly after Clay was discharged from the, from the German military. He served in World War I with the Germans. He uh, despised the war effort, hated the war, um, and then started painting in earnest after uh, he got out of the military service in 1918, which is also the year of the Spanish flu pandemic, which swept through most of the world at that time. So Clay was writing in a time of great division, of great horror, bloodshed, sickness. Uh, he was creating this work of art, um, which I think speaks to our time as well. You have these churches um, with all this darkness surrounding them, and they look like they're they're empty, they're broken, and it it's just interesting to see how this can relate to our time uh, as well. And later in Clay's career, he um, was really demonized by the Nazi Party. His his art was labeled as degenerate, and some of it was destroyed and removed from museums. And he was affected by by uh, intense political division in his in Switzerland and Germany. And this painting speaks to that and some of his later paintings do as well. Um, this, uh, this, this painting actually, when I first said it, it reminded me of a different time in history. Um, it reminded me of the 17th century, which is the Protestant Reformation. At the time it was the 500th anniversary of Luther's 95 Thesis and the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. And that century, too, was one of immense change, of division, of bloodshed, of oppression, of revolution, and faith was used to divide people. 
faith and politics were blended. You know, if, if you know that period and its history, it is so much change happened. Some good came out of it, but a lot of um, horrible things happened in the 17th century done in the name of, of faith in, in some cases. Uh, and it's, it's interesting. I used that as a lens to enter into the world of this painting where each of these churches is drawn from a different perspective and they're incompatible with one another. They are not in agreement. They have this dark clouds hanging over them. And I used the Reformation as a lens. So this piece quotes some hymns and chant um, from the Anglican, or from the Catholic, Lutheran, Calvinist, Anglican, and Mennonite slash Amish traditions, all of which um, find their origin in some way or another um, through the Protestant Reformation or were changed by the events of that century. And a lot of horrible things happened during that century, but also it inspired generations of believers. It gave us beautiful hymns and art and commentary and changed the way we think about society. And um, I hoped to think that 2020 um, and the decades before and after this, however long it takes, that we too as humans um, can find beauty and find sacred spaces, um, can work together, can and can create art together um, that's lasting in the same way that the Reformation lasted and changed the world. Um, one of the texts that's quoted is Psalm 84, uh, which is which reads, "How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God." Even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. It is a psalm that yearns for peace, that yearns for unity, that yearns for inclusion, that yearns for togetherness. Um, and when I, pro when I wanted to share this piece with you, that weighed heavy on my mind, that in our time of division, of isolation, of quarantine, I, I too yearn for a time and place where we can be together. Uh, where we can commune together as friends, we can worship together as friends. Um, whatever tradition or background you come from, I, I hope that you can connect um, with this idea of being together and lament the division that surrounds us. Um, and in some small way, maybe this piece will, this piece of music will bring you solace um, as you find that togetherness in yourself. Um, so this is City of Churches featuring Shannon Murphy on organ.
Thank you, Shannon, um, for that incredibly moving performance. Um, and also thank you to uh, First Presbyterian Church of Rutherford, New Jersey, where that recording was made. Um, how good it is to fill that sanctuary with sound, to fill that emptiness with music. I, I only wish I could be physically there because as a fan of organ music, um, there is nothing like sitting in one of those cathedrals or churches and just hearing waves and waves of sound from all the pipes, from those big 32 foot pipes. Um, I wish I could be there, uh, but it is good to hear, to hear that sound and to fill that silence with beauty and with music. So thank you for the performance. Um, I wanted to respond to some of the questions here uh, about the bell sounds. Those are from a stop on some organs called the zimbelstern, which is like a, a symbol star, maybe, I think is what it means. It's like a, a bunch of bells that a rotating thing spins around and, and hits all of the bells. Um, some of them are tuned to certain pitches. Some of them are kind of odd intervals and pitches, but not every organ has that stop. Um, and actually, I didn't know that the organ at Shannon's church in, in Rutherford, New Jersey had one. So when I got the recording and heard the cymbal stern, I almost started crying or like started jumping up and down um, because it's such a joyful moment in the piece um, when all the bells start ringing um, and all the connotations that bells might have, joyful, um, danger, mourning, um, finally hearing the bells uh, on Easter Sunday morning or on Christmas, uh, all those religious and, and spiritual and social things uh, coming together. It's also fascinating to write for the organ because I don't know what instrument the piece will be played on or it might differ from space to space or, or acoustic to acoustic and trusting a performer like Shannon to make those choices based on the score and the vision I have for the piece is something that not every type of ensemble or piece that you write for might happen. So uh, I want to get to a few more questions if there are some here. Um, yes, thank you for, uh, I do think the organ is the king of instruments. I studied organ for a while. I'm not playing very often anywhere, but it's a, it's a, you're writing for the, you know, it's a huge instrument with so, such a wide range. It's beautiful to write for. And when played well, it, it can blow you away. Um, yeah, party bells, indeed. Um, hopefully we'll all ring the bells um, when this pandemic is over and celebrate in style um, from every steeple. Um, that is the end of my live stream. Uh, thank you all for, for being here, for your lively comments, for your fun um, energy that, that you all brought to this. It would be just me in my bedroom um, talking to my computer yet again, um, but I'm sharing something that I'm passionate about with. All these musicians are passionate about, and it's great to have people here to share that with. Um, if you could take a moment if you are able uh, to support the musicians by going to that link, which is in the de description below this video. Um, a gift of any size will be forwarded onto them and split between the musicians that are featured in tonight's video. You can find more recordings of the Paul Clay pieces, but you heard them here first. Um, and these musicians deserve a round of applause and, and your support as well. If you're interested in more of the project, um, like I said, you can you can follow my Patreon page uh, for updates about this or my Facebook page. Uh, and I'm at, always, as ever, excited to share this work with you. So um, keep in touch if there's no more comments. Did I specify any of the stops, Vern, Vernon asks? I did for this, for this um, piece in particular. I did specify sounds for each of the five themes or the five hymn tunes and gave some guidelines of, I want the Luther, you know, Ein Festeberg to have 32 foot brass stops, like it's pounding on the door. Um, I wanted that. So I did specify that or I wanted the, um, the Calvinist hymn, um, which is Psalm 51, Geneva 51, to have this reedy, like aggressive nasal um, pleading quality. So I did specify a lot of the stops and a lot of the colors, um, but with the knowledge that that an organist will make it work on whatever instrument they might have, 
um, and try to keep each theme distinct in some way so you can tell when they're whiplashing back and forth throughout the piece. Um, yes, thank you all for coming. Um, I might do more of these down the road. Uh, it's actually kind of fun. I, I hope it all went well, uh, maybe a few technical glitches here and there. Um, but thank you for, for sharing this evening with me. This video will be saved and posted if you couldn't make it to all of it um, or want to watch it again to um, draw along with the pieces or study more. Um, that's it for everyone um, for tonight. Thank you again to the musicians. Consider supporting them with a the gift. Um, take care. Be well, be safe, be happy, um, and have a wonderful night. Thank you all.